it's so good to see you in the house of God today. You look wonderful. Uh, since the last time I stood here, I think on the 1st of October, and what a joy it is that I get to stand here again on the last day as we are closing off the month in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord has been faithful. Has the Lord been good to you? Has the Lord been kind? Do you have a testimony of the goodness of the Lord? Please turn to your neighbor and in just a minute tell them a thing, a testimony, something that you feel the Lord has done for you. You don't have to look for it. It's right there with you. One, two, go. You share in half a minute, then your neighbor will turn to you and share as well in half a minute. Let's have some people speaking, speaking, speaking about the faithfulness of God, the doing of the Lord in their lives. Come on, do not be silent. I see a few silent people, a few silent people. Please share with somebody. Let somebody know that I am alive. At least I know if it were not for the Lord who was on my side. If it had not been for the Lord. Come on, somebody. Do not be silent. I see a few silent people in the back. I know the Lord has done you better than your acting. Share with somebody. Share with somebody. Let there be a testimony in your mouth. Let us be doers. Doers of the word. Just something. You don't need to sound super spiritual if that is your fear. You can just say, I have breakfast today. Just share with somebody. Tell them, I have clothes on my back today. Just tell them something. It may sound cliche, but the Lord has done it anyway. All right, all right, all right, all right. Hallelujah. By our sharing, we are able to know that God has been at work, hasn't he? Amen. The last time we stood here, we were looking at the believer's practice, and we looked at witnessing. Do you remember? All right, so we've done witnessing the first part, and we did witnessing the second part, and we hope that we would finish. So hopefully today, we're going to learn this. Witnessing the believer's practice, you're looking at witnessing the third part. So that is what we are adding. So come, we'll go and take notes. We'll go and part one and part two. Kama kuna space urudi hapo uengeze hapo part three. Kama kuna uanze malimpia, seme part three. Dr. Ron alitufunza la sandi. Naeza nikashuka ni angalia mnaandika nga nini. So be ready, stay ready, stay ready. Demta meka wapi. All right. The believers practice. And we said a witness is somebody who recounts something that they have seen. Okay. You have seen something or you have experienced something. And so you can give your story. You can give your testimony. Buwana Yesu asifiwe. Buwana Yesu asifiwe. So this is who a witness is. That's somebody that has seen something, has experienced something, and they can give a story. They can share of what they have experienced or what they, had see, they have seen. It is required of us to be witnesses, we said. The Bible, when Jesus is sending them out, he says, go therefore. No, he says, when he's telling them that they shall be filled with the Holy Spirit, he says, and you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my Wit, come on, say it with me. You shall be my witnesses. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. That when the Holy Spirit comes upon the life of a believer, they are transformed to become witnesses. It is not possible to be filled with the Holy Spirit and not go out to share or to tell what the Lord has done, what you have experienced. We said it is not a, it is not a science really. It is not something that you sit and have to think about. If you have experienced it, you can tell. If you eat a meal for the very first time and you enjoy it, I can ask you how did you enjoy it? Can you recommend something on this menu? And the, you can be able to tell. You don't need much because you are there. You may find something that people enjoy, but you don't personally or particularly enjoy it. So whatever you give, that is your story. Have you tasted of the Lord and seen that he's good? Then you can share with somebody and tell them, this is what I have experienced about the Lord. I'm just giving a recap for that. those of you who are not here and those of you who are maybe from high school and you're back home, Karibu Nisana, we have missed you. The place looks fuller because of you. We bless the Lord for all of you in the house today. Amen. So this is just a recap. So we're talking about the witness, the place that we're supposed to be in, and we went right all the way to the early church, if you remember. We went to the book of Acts chapter 6, and we were talking about some of the things that were happening in the church. There was a dispute um, between the people because there was a place for serving the tables. Some people felt like others of their own were being neglected. Their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. Do you remember? And so the story ensued, and in the... Um, when they went to the apostles, the apostles said, it is not right that we should give up the work of doing this ministry that we are doing and go to serve tables. So let's appoint from among yourselves people who had mambo mangapi. Ya kwanza. People who are of good reputation or character. Number two, people who are full of wisdom. And then, people who are full of 
the Holy Spirit. People of good reputation, people full of the Holy Spirit and people who are full of wisdom. And they appointed some over this business. I'm just glossing over it. And so they appointed some. If you continue, you're going to find that they appointed some of them. Among the men that they found, there was a man whose name was who? Whose name was? Stephen. All right. So we started to pick Stephen as our case study because of all the people who had been mentioned. There was a guy there called Timon. The other one who was called? Nani anasema Pumba? So there were, there were people who are called Timon, there was a guy called Philip, there was, um, so there was Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit, and Philip, and Prochorus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte from Antioch, whom they set before the apostles, and when they had prayed, they laid their hands on them. And these were the people who were given to do that job. And the Bible says, as a result of that, then the word of God spread, and the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests were obedient to the faith. And then in verse 8 of chapter 6, it says, And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and signs among the people. And so of all these people, even though all of them were full of, they were men of good reputation, full of wisdom and full of the Holy Spirit. But the Bible picks out Stephen. It says Stephen was full of, together with everything else, he was full of faith and power, and he did great wonders and signs among people the people. And so we decided in the last season that we're going to pick, in the last episode, we're going to pick Stephen as our case study. And we're going to move with him because we're looking at being a witness as part of the believer's practice. And we looked at how just because of the good things that he was doing, he was not doing wrong. He was talking about the goodness of God. He was going out. God was using him to do great mighty wonders and signs among the people. There were people who arose amongst themselves because the devil had tried earlier, if you Remember, we said the devil came among the ranks of the people, and what he was doing was to pit believers against each other in the church. So some people are feeling like we are being neglected in the church. Oh, the church is not caring for us. So when that tactic did not work, he went now to attack directly the believers. The people who aliposhindwa kuwapiganisha katikati yao, sasa akaanza kurushia, kuwarushia mishale. So people started coming up with lies, the Bible says, and there arose some from um, what is called the synagogue of the freed men, disputing with Stephen. They were disputing with him, and you wonder why were they disputing with somebody who is telling the truth. They are preaching the gospel. They are saying the truth about it. They are working the miracles of God. And they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spoke. So they secretly induced men to say that they have heard him speak blasphemous words. You ask yourself, what is blasphemy? Blasphemy is just really anybody or the offense of speaking um, sacrilegiously about God. It is the um, pro, it is profane talk about God. Now, if you came and you said that Pastor Brian is speaking blasphemously against God, that is a serious offense. So that is the thing that they picked. That is, again, don't forget it was the enemy at work. When he has tried the first nini na imeshindwa, the first tactic na imeshindwa, so he comes now against them, he starts to throw attacks to them. Remember, we are looking at being a witness as a believer's practice. So the enemy is going to come, and we said that in the last time. So he came to him, and they were not able to get him. It says they were not able to resist um, the wisdom, verse 10, and the spirit by which he spoke. So they got people to come and plant. They planted people to speak lies about him. And that is going to happen often. Even to you, there will be people in the office when you're rising and you're doing the right thing. There'll be people in the office who will be saying that this girl, she sleeps with her bosses so that she can go to the top. People are going to say those things. Now, what should be the response of the believer? We'll see that in just a minute. As a witness, do you stop doing the things that you're supposed to be doing? Some people are just mad they don't like the fact that you are bold about Jesus Christ. There are people who in your service, as you're serving the Lord with boldness, you're loud and proud and you're careless about the fact that other young people are saying other things about you. There are people that will not be happy. They will start to say things around us. I want you to remember that number one, it is not those people. It is the devil who is working behind the scenes. We may be losing a lot of strength trying to fight the puppet. We should be fighting the puppet master. Let us not waste a lot of energy. And we've said that here many times. Unapigana na ndugu yako, unapigana na dada yako. Umekasirikia mtu, umeamu hata sita wa yongelesha. Hata unatoka sell, hata unafanya. Wachana na yo maneno. Focus on the real person. It cannot be this one that is my enemy. The Bible names one enemy for us believers. And that is the devil. 
the opposer, the Bible says, our adversary, the devil. First Peter chapter 5, verse 8. We have one adversary. The only fault of your brother or your sister is that they have given him a loophole. You cannot beat them, punish, you cannot punish them grossly because of that. You cannot punish them grossly because of that. The person that you wake up at three to pray against is not your neighbor, is not your boss, is not your colleagues, is not your parents. That's not the person you wake up in the midnight hour to start fighting. No, you wake up in the midnight hour against the avenger. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 3, we'll go back to this many times, verse 15, that you... God talking about the seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent says you shall strike his heel and he shall bruise your head. When you wake up in the midnight hour to pray, the person whose head you're bruising is not your boss, is not your mother or your father, it is not your pastor. The person you're waking up to strike his head is the devil. You give him no chance to come up again. Unapiga kuwa. Umoyona nyoka akiuliwa? Umoyona? Nyoka amekufa lakini mtu tu anaendea huko mawe hii ile long nine unakuja unairusha hivi unataka kugonga na ameshakufa but you don't you ukifikiria anaweza akafu unamuua for this life and for the life to come that is that should be our conviction that should be our occupation our preoccupation in the church should be exactly that bwana yesu asifiwe so they try against Stephen and they're not able to. They plant people amongst themselves. So what is the believer's response? The believer's response is to keep moving. To keep witnessing. To keep practicing. You walk in the truth. Yesterday we were in a place and we were looking at, in a Bible study, we were looking at the, book of, um, the books of 2nd and 3rd John, the letters, 2nd and 3rd John. And there is a general theme about walking in the truth. It has a beautiful picture to think about walking in the truth. You're not taking one step and two steps and then you stop. You're not taking five steps and then you stop along your journey to look around. You are walking in the truth. You're walking in the truth. So that is the believer's response. When things come, when the enemy is attacking, you don't slow down. You see, how we give the devil a foothold in our lives, beloved, is that we slow down enough for the devil to get on board. And we can slow down in many ways. When you decide in a moment of offense that I'm no longer going to go to that fellowship, in a moment of offense, I'm no longer going to do that. In a moment of offense, I'm going to cut this one off and this was your accountability partner. So now you're left without accountability. Guess what you're doing? You're slowing down for the devil to climb on board. And my mom likes to tell us this, that if you give the devil a lift, do not be shocked when a few miles down the road, he's the driver. Don't allow him. Usim kanyagie. Gari ambalo linakwenda kwa kasi watu wa Mungu hakuna mtu anaweza akadandia si unajua kudandia gari unajua zile lorry zimeambiwa hang at your own risk there is nobody that will be running lorry iko at 80 alafu unaona mtu wako kwa hayo anakimbia aende akadandie it's not possible but as it kanyagia bale pale bumps pale kawes pale inakanyaga bumps hivi ndio unaona sasa mtu anakuja the fault of the believer is when we slow down enough for the enemy to climb on board. I want you to imagine if Stephen in his day had slowed down in his work. Anasema, eh, hey, ah, watu ni kama wata ni maliza. Ah, tu vinyo anaendele, wacha basi ni le low, wacha ni le low ni achane na ima neno. Uko kwa ofisi yako, watu anasema, mamu anasema, ah, wacha basi ni achange kuu, nini, wacha ni achange kuu. Ama ni ima umbe ni mekua ni kiomba. Have you ever noticed that the moment you decide in your heart that you're going to start praying, consistently. You're going to start reading the word. You're going to start speaking to God. The moment you make up in your mind, Nikama and Yovita inaongezeka. Have you noticed that? So what is the believer's response? You cannot slow down. We don't let up for nothing. You cannot afford to slow down. You must continue pushing the pedals. Step on that gas. Fukuza barabara kweli kweli. Pastor Solomon anasema, vuruga gari. Vuruga kabisa. Enda. We're talking about the believer's practice doing what? Witnessing or being a witness. Stephen's response was that he did exactly what he was supposed to be doing. 
Are there people that are talking against you? Please, do not pause to dignify those things with a response. Sukuma. You see, the disclaimer here is, if you know you are doing the right thing, like Stephen was, there is no point to try and justify. Matunda ya tajisemea enye. Because we are spending such precious time that we have in things that are nonsensical. I am spending precious time in pitting other people against the other people. Iyo masa umetengeneza ungekuwa umeitumia kufanya maombi. An extra five minutes in the morning or whatever time you pray. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, you can't let up. You can't stop. You have to keep going. You have to push. Continue pushing. Somebody told us in high school, there were motivational speakers. We didn't listen to them. I wish we did do. But now we are bringing it back. Refresher. Sama, when the going gets tough, the tough, who are these tough? We said last time that the righteous are what? As bold as a lion. You cannot let up. When things have gotten difficult, that is the time. It is not time for you to say, ah, it is becoming so difficult for me to pray. I'm going to even stop praying. I no longer have the energy. Then what, beloved? Then what? When you know what prayer affords for you, you cannot afford to stop. I will pray. <laughs> I will pray. <laughs> this is the song that says, if I don't pray, Satan will do that thing on me. So you must pray. You say, oh, but reading the Bible is so difficult. Read the Bible even then. I was sharing with a, with a friend of mine the other day. I was saying, if you decided you're reading the Bible from January, from, not January, from Genesis to Revelation, and you've decided, lazima ni kazane nao, kuna mahali unafika panaito Leviticus. Alafu unaingia mahali panaito Numbers. It is actual numbers. Have you seen that? Unasema 3550, 3454, 65, unasema, mayo, but you cannot let up. I was telling my friend that ukisikia ni kama umechokea hapo wachana na Leviticus enda uko kwingine alafu utarudia Leviticus ile siku uko na nguvu your assignment is do everything you need to do just don't stop find interesting ways if your challenge is reading the bible find interest when it becomes difficult when the accuser the deceiver is coming at you and he's making you feel lethargic kusoma bible to spend me in drink is crazy i don't know what has happened don't worry, you're in good company. Look for interesting ways. Because if I know this is the way, if I know this is where my solutions are, by hook or by crook or by both, I will not stop. I will read this thing. Even when I am feeling tired. So I will look for interesting ways. I will look for a friend. Let's make it fun. Let's bring snacks. Before I stop reading the Bible, and I know reading the Bible is helping me, I will do everything in my power to read it. When all of them fail, then maybe I can consider stopping. But before you have tried everything, have you ever seen people who, they have a girl group, and one end to mostly girls. Okay, like a girl group, one end Mahalia Boreta and Paradise Lost. One end of Masai Shuka. One end of Kaves, Kakona Tumaua. Wameka to fruit cutlings, maembe ili imekatoa hivi ikatolewa hivi nje. Unajua? Ma, imekuwa matumbo ya maembe hapo nje. Wametandika hivi, wametengeneza. They are wearing nice sundresses to dresses to floral. Unashinda what is this occasion? Wow. At it is their Bible study group. Yes. They have looked for every way to make the Bible look attractive. If that is the thing that will make me read the Bible, hi. I will do it. Go for it. It is about time that as believers, with especially as young people, with all the mind and the brilliance God has given to you, please, it is about time that we stop being lethargic at you make it to if it's in your summer. Mrs. Yangi Soma Bible Son Lia Chanana. Alafuna Mukfanyaninu Lia Chanana. That brain God has given you. Look at your neighbor. Look at your neighbor. You see that brain that they have? You can't see it, but if you look at them, you can see it, I promise. <laughs> That brain, that brain that the Lord has given to you, my people, that brain, use it for kingdom good. Use it to get you ahead. Don't just be seated there and say, oh, me, I don't enjoy praying, I don't enjoy praying. Look for people. There are some of you in this place, and you know that what I'm talking about. Some of you who come to me and tell me, Pasi, I want you to pray for us. Because we have a group of people. We are seven of us. Some people. What we're getting in your IP, or we're getting in your axis, we're going to be able to do that. That is creativity. 
kama huu unashindwa kuwa mkathiri kuomba tafuta watu wa kusaidia kuomba pamoja hiyo ni creativity ama namna gani acha ni pende disclaimer join your service mstaftane tu ati just a boy and a girl wawili tu hivyo mna mshana anga 3 just kumoja mtasema let's do our prayers physical tumesema shetani alali lazima tukue nini shetani afanye nini you must be sober be vigilant first peter 5:8 again because your adversary the devil he goes around he's looking for someone to devour he's hiding prowling in the bushes anatokelezea tu you you cannot afford to be sleeping he is not sleeping if there is somebody whose work ethic you must admire is the devil his work ethic the bible says in revelation where we'll just go to in a minute it says he's the accuser of brethren who accuses them day and night he does not stop what he was doing with job imagine that is what he does every day and he does it for every person his work ethic is mad no wonder he's so successful in his ventures we can at least take that upon ourselves we may not learn many things from the devil but at least we can learn our work ethic now oh, i know that doesn't sound so spiritual but it's true Bwana Yesu asifiwe. I'm saying you cannot stop. That is the point we're explaining in case you're lost. Stephen did not stop doing what he was supposed to be doing. You cannot afford to let up. Find all the ways. If you are a coder, Mungu amekupatia akili brilliant. Then unachokanga na hii maneno. Look for ways how can you code a key thing that can bring a key interface. Inatokelezea kwa kwa screen niki download app yenye ume develop niki download niweke niki unlock screen hivi chua the first thing that comes is a bible verse don't think like that ndio kama una struggle lingi kwenda kujifunga unajua labda shida ya mtu ni kufungua makaratasi ya biblia sasa umetengeneza you have cut the short umetengeneza shortcut nikifungua tu screen unlock chua kuna kivas what the people for you version are doing verse of the day Look for creative ways. Don't just be seated there and say me I don't enjoy doing this thing. In my fellowship miss you enjoy. In my I'm not your fellowship to enanga tu inakuwa boring. What are you doing about it? That's why many of our you young people you must join a fellowship. Join a home cell. Join a ladies group. So many of my ladies groups inakuwa too boring ni wa mama peke yake. Ingia ubadilishe story. Ingia huko uonyeshao wa mama. Dwise mlikuwa dwise jana. Mliona ile group ilikuwa ina lead. Uliona vinyao wa mama walikuwa wamevaa school uniform wamejifunga pusi katuku na wameka tu tu ribbons i saw the photos on our social media platform these are people who are making it fun na it is some young people who came into the ranks waka creeping kwa hizo my groups kama jetu kufanya school uniform to buy tie to buy socks unaona wamama wamevaa skirt alafu wako na socks hadi huku wanakanikaa kwa high school na kaka ma head girl huko ilikuwa ina kaka ma head girl convention kenya schools christian fellowship do i zimaman i mean I saw the photos I was so thrilled I wasn't there but I saw the photos last night it was so thrilling I was so tickled but I loved it I was like yes make the gathering fun for the men in the house same to hizo men groups na kwa tu waze hizo memos na kwa tu wanaume what are you doing about it you're part of the problem come through kuja utuonyeshe how what should we do tuonyeshe vinyao watu wanaenda paint bowling tuonyeshe vinyao wazee wanaweza wakaenda go karting unajua go karting tuonyeshe vinyao wanaweza kaenda shooting range tumeenda men's group yetu men of dominion men of shalom hizo ndio groups zangu unaenda hizo groups tunasema tumeenda huko nje ku shoot tunaenda huko ku fellowship unaenda uleka hivi unasema haya wasaza tuna shoot shetani utua it is thrilling but you have not given up the place of gathering together Use your brain for something that will count for eternity. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. I pray that somebody's faith will be stirred up. That when you leave this place today you will go out and do something. You will not just be seated utachoka na shetani. Haukujangi fellowship, usomangi Bible ukiwa peke yako, ukiwa na watu, haufanyi yoyote, umeketi tu na ngoja parapanda ilie. Atuko sure kama ikilia utapatikana. You must arise and do something. God has given you mad talent my people. Crazy talent. If you're good about dressing when him so a look unajua kumachisha hivi kutoka juu hadi chini unajua mambo ya color blocking na unajua mambo hizi zingine ma contrast then do something about it kama ukuje uongee na my youth leaders unawaambia wase we need to bring that youth service back up to yongeza hivi to tuseme every last friday of the ma- friday sunday of the month tutakuwa tunafanya ma dress code unaambia watu leo tunafanya the 80s what you are going to come about the 80s people look forward to coming to church what are we beating that lethargy for just sitting in the house and saying sisi kwenda church church inakuwa to the same old same old 
Tuambie kama yenye itabadilisha, wewe ndio umepatiwa hiyo akili kama yenye itabadilisha ifanye vitu zikuwe better. Ni tuanzange na salmon ukiingia unanipata nikihubiri. Alafu tunamaliza kule na praise and worship. If that is what will make people come, do it, but do not just sit there and complain. Do not slow down because as you slow down the enemy finds a place to climb in and then he starts to pit us against each other. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Tell your neighbor neighbor. You're on duty. I mean it's on you now it's on you now you can't say you don't know now you can't say you, you see the problem of coming to church is that beloved every time we come to church we are taught something now it is one of the things one more thing that you know that you must do the bible says we looked at it in the book of james uh, in the midweek service that for he who knows what is right to do and does not do it for him it is every time you sit in a place of instruction you are adding on opportunities for you to sin <laughs> because if you don't do them now you know you cannot just sit there and say, I don't know. Oh, I think we're not sure. We are taking out ignorance. Because if anyway, ignorance is no defense, they tell us. So Stephen did not let up. He continued. You see, an interesting thing about Stephen, let's just read that in case you're saying, Leo, to just my Bible. Verse 54 of Acts chapter 7. Stephen did not let up. In fact, when they accused him, Anawadunga lecture moja moto inatoka one chapter into the others. Do you see how many verses there are? 54 zinaendelea hivi. Ni Stephen anaongea tu. Anawapasha. An wanamwambia oh huyu mtu aongee ukweli. Asema kaeni hapo niwaambia hata mjui sijasema bado. He does not let up. He doesn't say oh these people are going to kill me. Acha ninyamaze nisingie kwa shida Mr. Kangi shida. Eh? Acha ninyamaze basi nitapata opportunity. Afadhali nikiwa alive. Unajua shetani anatusaidia sana ku nini? Ku rationalize Una kitu unaambia sasa wasi unajua unajua acha tufikirie acha tukuwa realistic hapa unajua wakiniua i'll not be around to preach the gospel so afadhali ni nyamaze ndio wasi niue ndio niubiri siku nyi and that sounds like wisdom doesn't it but for stephen that was not it he knew i have been given limited time all i have is today i'm not thinking about tomorrow i don't know about my tomorrow the bible says it is appointed for man to do what to die once and after that Judgment. Our problem is that we don't know when the appointment is. We have said it here many times. You may be looking at me with all of my 31 years, and you're thinking, yeah, that man is so old. He's closer to death. All things held constant. All factors held constant. If we were only to die because of old age and nothing else, it is highly likely I will die before Stephen. All factors held constant. Stephen is one of the people who tells me how old I am. But because we don't know when it is appointed for man to die, it may be highly likely that me, if I am going to live up to 100, I am still very young. Because if Stephen, with all of his 22 years, or 23, it's only one year difference, calm down. <laughs> if Stephen, in all his 22 years, is going to die at 30, then he's very old, isn't he? These are just examples. All right. So because it is appointed, we know the appointment must stand. I will never forget hearing Pastor Beatrice preach that in a funeral. The appointment must stand. If there is somebody who keeps an appointment, it is God. The appointment must stand. Because I don't know when it is coming. So long as I have today, I must be purposeful with today that I have been given. Because we said in the midweek service, a friend of ours, Mungai, says that procrastination is the arrogant assumption that God owes me tomorrow. He doesn't. It's not promised to any one of us. Nimeamka leo. Jamani nina nguvu. Niko na uwezo. My faculties are intact. I must do something with my gift mix and my skill set that will ripple or count for eternity. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Jamani bwana Yesu asifiwe. Please turn to your neighbor. Push them. Shikiza dhe usikia na shika ikitu. Mambia neighbor lazima uamke. Some of us were saying, oh no, what are you doing about it? You can just sit there and hope. I'm just hoping. Hope is active. Faith is living. It is now. Faith. What am I doing about it? Every day I must do something about it. So Stephen does not shut his mouth. Anaongea, anaongea. He told, talks to the, anawapeleka from the beginning. Siku za Abraham. Because the high priest called him. Our masanhedin wanamuita. Wanamambia, are these things true? He says, 
Brethren and fathers, listen. The God of glory appeared to our father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia. And he goes all the way to talk to them, even about the patriarchs in Egypt. He talks to them about how God delivers Moses. He talks to them about the rebellion of Israel against God. He talks to them about how Israel resisted the Holy Spirit. We don't have all the time to look at it. Then, the Bible says in verse 54, when they heard these things, they were cut to the heart. And they gnashed at him with their teeth. He still did not stop when he saw how mad and furious they were. He says, but he, being full of the Holy Spirit, that's how we know it was God's desire that this man does not let up or slow down for nothing. Being full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven, and he saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he said, look, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. If you guys thought I was hot, I have not yet become hot. Let me tell you what I now see. I see the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. I'm not about to be silent. I know what I am doing is backed by God. So I will keep on going. He did not let up for nothing. The Bible says when they heard these things, they cried out with a loud voice. They stopped their ears and ran at him with one accord and they cast him out of the city and they stoned him. The Bible continues to say, and the witnesses laid down their clothes at the feet of a young man named Saul, that Saul that we know, who was later transformed. And they stoned Stephen and he was calling out to God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. This man, this witness that refused to let up, this believer that continued to practice what he was supposed to be practicing, he did not let up even to the very end, the Bible says. Then he knelt down and cried out with a loud voice, still saying, being a believer, even to the very end, Lord, do not charge them with this thing. And he, when he said this, he fell asleep. Right in here we see the reward of a faithful witness. That the Lord Jesus himself receives them into glory. The Bible says that he saw the Lord God himself standing at the right hand of God. As if Jesus Christ stood up from his seat and he was giving the man an ovation, a standing ovation. He says, well done good and faithful servant. I like to think to myself, every time I refuse to let up, that is what the Lord Jesus Christ is doing. He's standing on the right hand of God and he's saying, you better keep going, sir. That's my boy. That's my boy. You better keep going. You better refuse to let up. Keep on going. Don't let up. I think about the opposite true. What happens when I let up? I imagine it must crush the heart of our Lord and Savior. While he's seated in, on the right hand of the Father, it must crush his heart to think, ah, man, he's missing it. Do you know how you watch a, a football match? Oh, yesterday rugby did the thing and, you know, the spring box. Come on here. Oh, you guys don't know what I'm talking about. Okay. All right. You don't even know for like fourth year in a row, you guys, fourth time in a row, like another four years. You guys don't know about rugby? And, what? Tough. <laughs> anyway, let's use a sport that we all know. Sawa. Na chiki kwa kati. I just playing, I'm just playing. We were playing soccer and you guys are watching the, map, the match. You see, the person that is in the pitch, they can only see so far. They can only see their surrounding here. They, they, they can only see this person in front. What is right pale kwa peripheral vision? Ana unatua wa watu. How ni wenye wako nyuma? How ni mwenye anakuja full speed? Hakina, wanaitua De Gea. I don't, I'm not a soccer fan. Hakikuja, anakuja nga? De Gea. Ama ni goalkeeper. Anyway, they do not know who is behind, who is coming at full speed. But us, because we have a wide angle view, we can see the whole thing. As we, we can give commentaries. But that's why the commentators also sit in a place patched on high. They can just see everything. They're like, oh, no, I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. Oh, I'm going to go. You know, you are able to see the whole field. And so you have, you have a greater, wider perspective. So those people, us guys, when we are watching the match, we are able to look at people when they are making mistakes. You're like, ah, ah, si fanyivo, si fanyivo. Ah, I'm born, I'm born, I'm born. Because our... Lord Jesus has perspective wider than everyone else. That's why I say it must really crush his heart when he sees us going 
to slow down instead of not letting up. I don't know, why is, he do, why is he doing that? When he does that, the enemy is coming. Because sometimes we don't see where the enemy is. Because you see the thing about our, our enemy is that he's a good enemy. He's the, the devil, somebody said the devil is a good devil. Not to mean in his character traits, to mean he's good at his job. Nobody can do the job better than he. He's a good devil. He masquerades as an angel of light, the Bible says. He does not in, introduce himself when he comes to you. He's like, ah, Robert and Jane. It is I, the devil. I've come to have dinner in thine house tonight. So when you guys are arguing, you're like, babe, this argument in the house, imagine the devil is here. See, remember he introduced himself. So yeah, let's not give in. No, he doesn't do that. He comes in. Pole, pole, amenyamaza. Ataingia kupitia njia gani? Kupitia njia enye. Chakula kimeungua. Na sio jena lipika ni Robert. He was trying to be romantic. And Jane, when she comes in tired from wherever she's coming in, she's expecting a meal. And she finds a burnt sacrifice or burnt offering. Instead of seeing the efforts of her men and just chewing on that sooty piece of meat and saying, I have never tasted something so charcoal grilled, so yum, so good. Jane, kwa sababu shetania mengia through offense. Masquerading as an angel of light, I'm a kid to upper. Then I could like, Sato Ungekatu, Sefadal, so many chafulias for your angle. This is for your trip, Pasqua, Rusi, this is for your. Um, to a rebuke. Then Robert begins to be like, Ah, we are to risk his hanky, Ato Takangi. You don't even appreciate me. I'm feeling very unappreciated. Oh, no, 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 no. I even try. We are giving the devil a foothold. The reason why we fall like that is because we don't see, we don't have that wide view. But we should, beloved, we should have that wide view. Why? Because we are not doing this life alone. We are not blinded like the people of the world. We should have that view because we have the Holy Spirit who gives us the same view that God has. Aye. We are able to see like God does because we have the Spirit of God. The Bible reminding us that as he is in heaven, so he has made us here on earth. We are able to do that because of Christ Jesus inside of us. The Holy Spirit gives us the view that God has. That when I look at my sister here, I am not just seeing some Brenda Asuti from some part of the Kenya that I cannot pronounce. I am seeing my sister in the Lord. So her hearts are my hearts. Her joys are my joys. Her celebrations are my celebrations. Her struggles are mine. So we band together in prayer. We celebrate the great things and we intercede that the Lord will bring the, the, the um, answers to the bad things. That is the believer's practice. Those are the things that make Jesus rejoice when we are refusing to let up because of all the things that are happening in our world. We are refusing to slow down. I am saying I am offended, but I will still reach out to this brother and ask him, my brother, how are you doing? I am offended, but I will still seek peace. I will tell them, my brother, what you did to me was a bad thing. You hurt me deeply, but I'd like us to talk about it, if you're willing. It must make Jesus stand up proud and say, that's my girl. I mean, I mean, I mean Michael, Gabriel, you better come. Because that's my Ooh, child. Because you have allowed yourself to have the same view that Jesus Christ has. Let's wrap this in Revelation. Chapter 12, chapter 12, yes. Revelation chapter 12. The Bible says, verse 10, Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of God and the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren, who accused them before our God day and night, has been cast down. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives even to the death. What a beautiful testimony we have here. That when all the things are happening, this is what John saw. When all the things are happening, and the title there is that Satan is thrown out of heaven. With all the things, that day, the Bible says, he says, he heard a loud voice saying in heaven, salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come for the accuser of our brethren. When I read this, I thought to myself, I was trying to understand whose, whose voice was this, who was speaking, because it says, I heard a loud voice 
thing in heaven. But I found, I'm sure this is not the voice of God because it talks about our brethren. I'm sure this is not the voice of angels. It is the voice of one of the redeemed people who have made it. The cloud of witnesses that the Bible talks about. One of those ones who have made it right there. One of the people who are seated in heaven and they are rejoicing and celebrating. They're just like, yeah, keep running, keep running, keep running, Ian, keep running, you're going to make it. Keep going, keep going. Those people, that large cloud of witnesses that have made it pale Jew. Remember when the Bible says in the book of Hebrews, this is chapter 12, seeing therefore as we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, those people who have gone ahead of us after going through the hall of faith um, in Hebrews 11, all those people having seated. It's like an arena. So they are cheering us on. They're like, keep going. Keep going, you're going to make it. Don't let up. Don't slow down. Keep going. Yes, that's right. That's right. We have great support, my people. All of heaven is cheering us on. So one of those voices anyway is speaking. And it says salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. What a glorious day that is coming. That the accuser of the brethren shall be cast down. Because right now that's what he's still doing. It might be difficult for some of us to wrap our minds around it. But that's the assignment that the devil has even now. He's still accusing our brethren day and night, day and night. He's still accusing you. He's still accusing me day and night. And it may be a scary thing to think we have an accuser who is accusing us day and night. Even today, he's accusing you and I. Especially when we know the things he's accusing us of are true things. Oh, you didn't hear what I said. The things the devil is accusing you and I of are true things. You see, he goes to accuse us to try and discredit us from God. The believers. He's accusing the brethren. And then Diana Sema, of the things that you didn't do. Who you at Samanki Bibili Hata Yuiki at Jasama Bibilia? Who you do Naita Mwanawako? Jasama Bibilia who you Hey and it is true. You have not read the Bible the last time you opened your Bible was Sunday when Dr. Ron was here. So it might be scary to think you're being accused and it is true. Oh, you're going to make it. salmonella typhi abounds. And just like, oh, you're And it is true. He's accusing you and it is true. That sounds like the, the light stuff. But imagine... Even for the heavy stuff. Asama, oyu tunajua Kenya alifanya. Wali chukuwana, wakashikana, wakapelekana na hapo nyuma. Wali toka fellowship pamoja. Waka chukuwana, waka enda hivi, waka danganyana. Tuingie hivi kwa nyumba ni change nguwa basa. Lafu tuende. Asama, sawa tuingie. Ani bed sita. Mungu na kitu inasama, I want to change. And you're just going to face this way and then they're changing from behind you. And we know the devil is a liar. When he takes a tractor for me to turn from here to turn like this, <laughs> does it take intercession? No, I can just turn my head and it's like, I'm a way And then the rest is what? Unakuja huku unalia hata ushiki. I don't know what happened. You know what happened. We have an accuser. We stopped, we slowed down. You see, sometimes we, you know, utaki kubebu wafala. Ama ikuwa ni kuingia kwa nyumba yake shidei kwa hapi. Si, nita ingia tu mi, naeza ni kanine. Wacha, 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 una slow down. Kanyaga, bro, kanyaga. Ama bia, ah, si tupanda ya basi nine. Sama, ah, panda wewe, wacha ni kungoja hapa chini. Sama, ah, sauta ngoja hapa chini, vinyo kuna jua, itakupiga. Sama, sawa, I got sunburn before, did I die? Muna saidiana, ama na mna gani? Atwai kisama hizi vitu kwa nini? So the devil is accusing you of something which you actually did. Think about it. I want you to just wreck your mind by thinking it is true. The things the enemy is accusing you of are true things. He wouldn't have the audacity to go and lie before the presence of God, would he? So he goes to, he has gathered evidence. He has his tiny demons. They're just coming. If you've read a, a, um, a, is it a book uh, called Scrutip Letters by C.S. Lewis? interesting book. talks about conversations that the demons are having among themselves. That I recommend it highly. You could look for it. Screw tape letters. Screw, S-C-R-E-W, tape, T-A-P-E, letters by C.S. Lewis. So the, the demons are out there and they're having conversations. I think, 
Nim gani tulitumwa kwake? Ni brand ni brand gani? Ule brand kuna mabrayo wengi hiyo Shailo. Kuna brayo huko wanjohi, kuna brayo mwashigadi, kuna brayo mwingine. Ni brayo gani? Asema endea mabrayo wote. So mabrayo ndio sisi hao taabani. So shetani ana collect two evidence. Evidence za brayo zimefika huku. Za brayo mwingine zimefika huku. Za brayo mwingine zimejaza hii tent yote. Anaenda anazitoa evidence number one. Alifanya. Evidence number two. Ali do. Evidence number three. Ali. Watu wananyambua kitenzi walifanyana. Evidence number four. Walifanyana. Evidence number five. Kutendea, kutendesha, ku. Hii ni side ya YP. Ninawasikia. The thing about the things that he's saying is that they are true things. The accuser of our brethren. So it might be scary to think that the things he is accusing of us of are actually true things. But the victory of the believer is that we have an advocate. The Bible says this in 1 John chapter 2 verse 1 I would imagine. It says my dear children I write to you these things because your sins have been forgiven. If anyone has sins let him um my, I write to you these things so that you may not sin. If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father. Jesus Christ, the righteous. Leave that there for just a minute. It says, I write to you so that you may not. So it is not a license for us to live the way we please just because we have an advocate. Kama uko na lawyer wakili wako, haufanyi makosa tu watindi wakili ya pate kazi. Kweli si kweli. It says, and if anyone sins, if in the event that someone sins, in high school they used to tell us, fine, it says the righteous man may fall seven times, but he may rise again. But it is wisdom to know the righteous man need not fall seven times. The Bible says the righteous man can fall seven times. So far, I'm going to two marathon, and I'm going to two No, 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 no. The righteous man need not fall seven times. He says, if anyone does sin, let him remember that we have an advocate with the Father. An advocate where? In the earth? An advocate where? In your house? An advocate where? What a joy it is to know where my advocate is. It says my advocate is with the Father. If you have been here throughout the service, you must know that the advocate is truly with the Father. Because when we read the story of Stephen, it says that he saw Jesus Christ seated, standing where? At the right hand of the Father. Right there where the Father is, is exactly where my advocate is. So there is nothing that the accuser of our brethren can make where my advocate is not. When accusations are made in the presence of my advocate, I know my case is solid. What a joy it is for me to know. It is not a license for me to live the way I please, but it is a joy for me to know that the enemy has no power or hold over me. There is thou now therefore, Romans chapter 8 verse 1, no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. Because condemnation says you are too far gone. Nothing can be done about your case. But the voice of God says you have gone so far, but you can come back. There is hope for you. We have an advocate. You should not sin. But if you sin, I want you to remember your case is not cast out. There is nothing that can be done about your situation. No, no, no. He says, if you have sinned, you need to come back and start afresh. Let the Lord show you. Accept his teachings. The Bible says the grace of God that brings salvation, Titus 4 and 11, has appeared to all men. What does it do? It teaches them to say no to ungodliness. That's the work that we receive when we come back to God. When we sit in his presence, he says to us, this is how you shall say no to ungodliness. Because condemnation tells you, run. Run. Did you watch the Lion King? When the Kanini is being told, ukiru di mambo ni mabaya. Kimbia. Hepa. So you are running away from God. You are running away from God. Oh God. God is going to kill me. I have done something so bad. So as you're running away, where are you going? Nini niko uko inje? Revelation chapter 2, 22 verse, is it 15? Out there are dogs and witches and liars. Uko inje? Ni ma dogs, ma sexually immoral, ma liars, ma murderers, ma idolaters. Unona? As you're running away from God, that's where you're going. 
But the voice of the conviction of the Spirit says to you, you have done a horrible thing. You must go back to God. You must report to the headquarters today, today. If you watch those movies, these are CIA movies, when somebody has done something wrong out in the field, they have two options. They can either run and go and live a life of hiding, hoping that the, the office is never going to find them, or you can take yourself back to headquarters. When do Kajistaki? That's what David used to do. David used to always run back to headquarters. Just go and sit down. I'm about to go down. And just be like, against you and you only have I sinned. Nimehia yangu mwene. Nidhambi zangu mimi. Nimekosa mimi, nimekosa mimi, nimekosa. I am not doing that to, to seek sympathy out there in the world. Because you see, there is something that happens in our generation. We are okay telling everyone else what wrongs we have done, but God. That does not count for anything, beloved. We must learn to always report back to the headquarters. You go back to God and you say, God, I have done a horrible thing against you. I'm not saying that there is no place for accountability, but it is important for you. Even after you have ran around, you must always go back to God. Joyce Meyer likes to ask when something happens, do you run to the phone or to the throne? You must make it a point that the throne must be the first place you report before you go to the phone. Girl, you ain't never going to believe what happened. What happened was... So we was leaving the cashier, right? And you know that boy be tripping. You know he lying. You know, you know his limpid blue eyes. Okay, we don't have that. It's not applicable in Kenya, limpid blue eyes. <laughs> who, do you, who do you think you are? <laughs> I pray that you learn to report to headquarters. My time is up. Let me just finish. It says, the accuser of our brethren, who accused them before our God, day and night has been cast down. It says, and they overcame him. By the blood of the Lamb. I have tried. I cannot read this and not feel the overwhelming victory that awaits, that is laid up for the believer. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to the death. Three things again. The first time they overcame. These are the, the ways that the believer can overcome. The witness can overcome to the very end. It says to he who overcomes, there is a crown of life that has been laid out for them. So how do you overcome? It says by the blood of the lamb. We said this here before. It is not by the actual molecules that are found or the drops of the blood of Jesus Christ. Because if that were the case, the very Roman soldiers that were punishing him, when the blood fell on them, they would have received their salvation. So it's not the actual blood. The other thing why it's not the actual very, very droplets of the blood of Jesus Christ is because we know there is not enough blood in the body of any human being because Jesus was fully man in that time. There is not enough blood to save the whole population that was then and is now and is to come. So it is not the blood, the actual molecules or droplets, it is the blood, the action, the truth, the reality, the literal death and rising up of Jesus Christ again. The blood of the Lamb. Not by us again, just standing and just claiming the blood, the blood of Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus Christ. As if it is some abracadabra, magical, whatever that we're just claiming. No, 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 no. The blood, the true reality of what Jesus Christ has accomplished. What does it look like to overcome by the blood of the Lamb? Number one, you have taken him as your Lord and Savior. You have accepted his sacrifice for you. You have decided, yes, Jesus, you have come and you have died and you have died just for me. I accept your sacrifice, that your blood was shed for me to be the full propitiation of my sins. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. You overcome by the blood of the Lamb. That is for the unbeliever. For the believer, the blood of the Lamb is a beautiful place for you to begin your journey, because you, to continue with your journey rather, because every day you are living actively aware of what Jesus Christ accomplished for you. 
What that does is that it changes the way you think, the way you talk. It changes the way you carry yourself out. Because when you are aware of the blood of Jesus Christ, you are aware of the very consequence of sin. And so you are careful to know, if God would not spare his own son, that he put him on that tree because of how significant and severe sin was, it needed to be punished severely, then there is no way I can live a life of sin. It's it, it just changes the way you think. That you're no longer living a life of scheduled sin. You're not living in lewdness. Umejipangia. You're not living a just-in-case lifestyle. You know that life? You're not planning to sin, but the way you prepare yourself in the morning when you're going to meet your person, you, it's just in case. You know, we're not, we not planning to do anything, but unapaka mafuta adiyuku just in case. Am najua kenya nasema wachini zo Zile nguwe zenye unavaa. Unajua hizo nguwe ni seme? Kuna mtupali ya njumana sema. <laughs> Ukivaa hizo nguwe, unazivaa, unisema, nothing is going to happen. Lakini unaipika, unasema, wacha nivaya tu ndio. Hakuna kitu ita happen, but just in case, mtu wasi ibike at least. Hati <laughs> ukifaint. <laughs> when you accept the blood of the lamb, you're living a life that is fully aware of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. You're fully aware of what the punishment of sin is. And so you are careful to live your life in a way that to use the language of the encounter does not take Jesus Christ back to the cross. Bwana sifiwe. He says number two, they overcame by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. The word of their testimony, remember at the beginning of the service we started by sharing. Imagine that is a tool, a weapon that has been given to the believer to overcome. The word of their testimony. See, the thing that the testimony does in the most literal form is that as you're speaking it, you're also hearing it. It reminds you what the Lord has done. He says the psalmist in Psalm 103, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits. You must remember. You must remember. One sure way for you to remember is to recount, to talk about it, to share it, to let somebody know what the Lord has done. There is a big wide change since I got born again. There is a huge turnaround in my life because the Bible says that you are a royal priesthood, a chosen generation, God's holy nation. He has called you so that you may do what? That you may tell. Tell of the works of him who called you out of the darkness into his marvelous light. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, as a witness, you must be a teller. You must tell of the glory of God. You must tell what the Lord has done. That's why our fathers, as we are digging and repossessing the wells of our fathers, that's why they came this far. Because they were able, every time they met, they said, maneno ya uzima wa milele jamii yangu pia imelindwa imewekwa chini ya mbawa zake watubandiki yeye ndiye Mungu na hakuna mwingine kama yeye nasikia nikifurahi sana 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 nikifikiria kuna mji ambao tunaongojea mji ambao tutapatana na yeye siku ambayo nitasikia sauti ya baragumu panda itakapolia nitapaa mawinguni na nitamlaki bwana Yesu kuishi naye katika uzima wa milele Na shukuru sana alio nitendea buwana yesu. Amen. Na uko vipi ndugu yangu? <laughs> Ni mapema sana. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Even the relationship is authentic. Kwa hiyo testimony unasikia prayer requests, kwa hiyo testimony unasikia thanksgivings, kwa hiyo testimony unasikia... So, muna heart zenyu zina bond. Lakini siku hizi, aniache ni aje buda, hapo hapo wafiti. We rudi hapa, buwana asifiwe sana. Uko aje, mungu anakifanya niko aroe yako. Ambia jirani yako neighbor. You must be a teller. Not just because it is a cool thing to say we are digging and repossessing. Because those fathers knew something that we may have forgotten in our day and age. That they overcame by the word of their testimony. I don't know whether you have a testimony today, but I want to believe if you're a believer, you do. You must share with people. I know it does not seem cool. Okay, fine. You may not do it like that, but look for ways. By hook or by crook, start a podcast. 
Tell people what the Lord has done for you. Get on your habari kwa gari. Come on here, somebody. Ingia pale unasema, let me just tell you, I hope that you are well, that you continue to be held in his premium care. I want to tell you what the Lord is able to do. By all means, use your creativity to have the word of your testimony. To share it with somebody. Ingia kwa WhatsApp. Si kila wakati ma memes. Memes azina shide, but si kila wakati. Sa zingine unaingia pale unapost, unasema, the Lord is good. You don't know who will read that and be encouraged. Even as you're reading that, at Auna, I mean, hey, mungu ni mzuri. Tell your neighbor one more time, neighbor. Yeah. You must be a teller. Yeah. Ooh, finally, the Bible says, and they overcame him by not loving their lives even to the death. We've just read extensively and looked at the life of Stephen, who did not love his life even to the death. What that simply means is what we explained earlier, that the witness cannot afford to let up. So they might kill you, so what? You believe to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. Our problem comes when you think that there is more joy to be had here than there is to be had there. Our problem begins when we do not realize that this is just a dress rehearsal. The real story is coming. Our problem comes when we live life not in view of eternity. When we think that this is the long life and what is coming is just short. It's the other way around. So, should you be threatened even to the point of violence by the enemy? Then so be it. You see, how that is a weapon is that it doesn't matter what the devil will throw at me. I know that there is an end where the devil is not in. And that end has me and Jesus together in eternity. The song says, Ingawa shetani atanitesa, nitajipa nguvu kwani. Kristo amewona unyonge wangu, amekufa kwa ajili yangu. Regardless of what the devil may try, he may use one tactic, he may use the other tactic, but when he decides to use violence, finally, should he do it? Still, I'm not letting up. I pray that the Lord will stab somebody today in the house. That you will think to yourself, I cannot afford to let up. Not after such a high, appraise, a, a, high a price has been paid by the Lord. Not after everything, with all these things that are going on for me, I cannot afford to let up. I want to give you an opportunity, you've been here since the beginning, to lift up your voice. You know what the Spirit has been speaking to you. You know where you've been missing or losing out. And to lift up your voice and ask the Lord to help you. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Do not be silent. Do not be silent. Do not be silent. Lift up your voice and ask the Lord to help you. Ask the Lord to remember mercy. Ask the Lord to stir you up. Ask the Lord to open your eyes. Ask the Lord to make you a real witness. Ask the Lord to help you to actually be a doer of the word. That you will consider the blood of the Lamb. That you will consider the word of your testimony. And that you will not love your lives even to the death. That you will consider always Jesus higher than your own life. His agenda greater than your own agenda. In the name of Jesus Christ. Maybe you're here you've never given your life to Jesus Christ. That's the first step of all this thing. If you lift your hand, we'll sit quickly and pray with you. If you want to give your life to Jesus, are you there? We'd love to pray with you. You want to come to the Lord. You want to say, Lord, help me. I want to have you as my Lord and Savior. Are you there? Are you there? If you lift your hand, we'll see it quickly. We'll pray together with you. If you're, if you're afraid of the crowd, I hope you're not. But if you're afraid of the crowd, please don't leave this service the way you are. Make sure at the end of the service, you just locate any of these leaders or just grab any of us outside or the ushers. Just tell them you want to give your life to Jesus and we'll pray with you. And to pray for our last category of people. You're a believer already. You've given your life to Jesus but you've been struggling. You've not been a good witness. I want you to make a bold step of faith and I want you to just rise up on your feet. You're asking the Lord to help you, to take you back to that place of being a real witness. If you rise up on your feet, we want to pray together. Thank you for everyone that's standing. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for these loved ones that are standing here today. I thank you because you have called us toward yourself into a life that is greater than we have ever imagined. And Lord, as we stand in your presence today, it is because we realize we have not been doing what we ought to do. 
or because we feel like our strength is failing. Because we realize we need, we need to continue pushing. We cannot afford to let up. We must push further. We must go on harder and harder still. We don't want to give the devil a foothold. That's why we are standing. It is our acknowledgement of saying we are weak, but you are strong. So fill us afresh today with your Holy Spirit. Take over our lives. Sweep over our souls. Make us brand new. Cause us to be more like you. In the name of Jesus. We bless you, we love you, and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may celebrate the name of Jesus.